Three, two, one. Hey, everybody. This is Victor. I am here with Jared. Uh, part three. Uh, we're doing part three interview here, case study interview. Um, this one is how Jared went from uh, flipping to, a, uh, what would we say, is a 20, 20 door multifamily uh, purchase. Is that right? Is that what we, 20 yes. door? Yes. Okay. That's right. How are you? How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Victor? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so what's what's really interesting, uh, that's why I wanted to capture your journey for this like next little segment of where you've been since we last spoke. A lot of people are like, oh, I want to get into flipping and then I want, eventually want to get into rentals and like multifamily. Uh, so they see like the flipping as a, as a you know stepping stone to get into the multifamily. Uh, so that's why I wanted to you know, talk to you today and kind of share your, share your journey um, just because you've done a lot since we last spoke. Well, you've done a lot, a lot. Um, but if you could, uh, if you could just refresh our memory, uh, so what's your background again? Yeah, so I, I run a personal training business in town. That's kind of where, you know, what I've been doing for almost 10 years now, come t- February of 2022, um, yeah. February 15th to be exact. Yeah. Um, Swamp Fitness will be 10 years old. So that's super exciting. So yeah, that's kind of been um, my main uh, career. And then Mm -hmm. I got into real estate in 2016. Um, and it started with, you know, uh, a rental kind of, a on market rental, regular deal. And then kind of came from there. No, that's awesome. So you do like doing the spot fitness, also doing real estate. You've been doing really well too, to say the least. Um, I think in our last video, we were talking about like the Hawthorne property, uh, we're like, you, we were, I think we we're under contract and we we're going to do that one. Um, can you kind of ca- catch us up with what happened on that one? Cause I think that was interesting. That was still it's a huge success as I see it. Um, but yeah, what, what happened with that one? Yeah. So it was, had to get creative with it. Right. Cause we, we took a lot, we kept taking turns. It was kind of like, we were going to flip it. And then, you know, and then from there it was like, okay, let's, let's just try to list it and sell it as is. Right. And what we found was that a lot of people were uh, that were interested uh, prospective buyers were not uh, people that would qualify for a mortgage. Mm -hmm. And not to mention the property was in pretty, a pretty distressed state. Uh, It'd be questionable of whether or not they would get it, you know, qualified to get a loan on it um, and everything like that. So, um, so we ended up doing a, um, a seller, financing owner financing and um and it worked out i mean uh they they put down i think it was about 20 percent down so that was pretty good and then um they were okay with you know also covering insurance to uh you know the expensive insurance because of its the property's condition to just to protect both um the the new owner as well as myself in the case of him defaulting on the loan or or anything any liability especially liability right. because of the condition of that property so um so yeah so owner financing yeah well, what i like about that one because I, I know we were thinking like initially like what if we just do the full rehab route and that had some of its problems and then we went like okay what if we try to just list it and sell it i think we got a couple offers but there's like too low like it was going to mm-hmm. be maybe not enough profit. I think there was going to be profit, but it was going to be pretty minimal if I remember. Um, yeah. Was, yeah. I think it was, I think you're right. If now that I, I don't remember exactly, but I want to say it was like either like less than $10,000. And it was like, we put in all this work and I was probably too stubborn to like, I, like this, yeah. it, there's gotta be a better way. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, I think it know. worked out. So you, we, we found a buyer basically. So found a buyer, um, they did like a, like owner finance, just like you're saying, seller finance, they put some money down and now it's like a cash flowing asset for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, some people might've just given up, but like you, you stuck with it and made it happen. Um, and now it's a cash flowing asset. Now you got some, some, uh, you got a down payment. So you got, uh, you know, something pretty cool. And if they default worst case, like you just, you know, take it back and, you know, grab somebody else and hopefully they've done some work to it. Uh, that's, that's what you keep. I'm saying worst case, but I think they're yeah. up to date so far on their payments. Yeah. And my, uh, the, I, th- I would say the best thing about this one is just, there is no, 
there's there's no work involved now that the deal is done. I mean, obviously it's, you know, it's, I, I ended up um, hiring a um, loan servicing company. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's really awesome. Like, I don't, I don't have to worry about anything that it's like, they're like, it makes me look like I'm this professional lender, Oh, you yeah. know, like, cause it's like a loan servicing company and they're in charge of yeah. collecting payments and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, you know, I just like that there's no time that goes into that deal now. Yeah, no, that's really cool. You got the income from it and um, yeah, great deal. Um, so that's, that's the update on that one. So yeah, hopefully they continue to pay and in the worst case, if they don't, then you take it back and start all over again. So that's not, that's not the worst thing. Um, right. Okay. So that's that deal. Now you have, you actually bought, uh, kind of bought, sold some of it. You have some of it rented out. This is like a 20 unit. I think it's four buildings and it's 20, not 20, it's like 20 doors specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'd love to hear about this deal and um, like whatever you're comfortable sharing. Yeah, so it's yeah 20, 20 units all together and it's six buildings. So mm -hmm. it's comprised of uh, four quadruplexes and two duplexes. Yeah, and they were in different areas of town. Okay. Um, there was four in one subdivision, and then the other two were in completely different subdivisions. Um, they're all in Gainesville. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I worked it out to where I, I was able to wholesale six of the units. So one of the quads and one of the duplexes okay. and, um, and it was, it worked out pretty well. Cause the, the money that I made from the wholesale was actually able to help to pay for the down payment of the, the ones that I decided to hold, which was mm -hmm. the remaining 12 units. So yeah, that's crazy. So no money yeah, it, didn't return. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was definitely, it, it was very exciting for me. Um, you know, cause yeah, being able to have like make a huge leap within my portfolio, you know, um, th and through without having to necessarily put my own money down, it was, that was a really exciting thing. It, it was a lot of, you know, uncomfortable kind of just, moving on to the next thing, whatever, you know, um, it, it was scary. It was uncomfortable. It was, uh, challenging, um, stressful at some points, mm -hmm. but yeah, but I mean, it, you know, I, it was, it was awesome when I got the deal done, you know, and, yeah. and all the, like all the moving parts like worked out. That's how it felt. It just felt like there was all these moving parts. Like it was like, I had to make sure everything was good with the buyers. I had to make sure that everything was good for the ones that I'm keeping that was going well with the lender and make sure that the surveys were done on time and, um, and everything was good with insurance, like all of these moving parts. But at, when it was all said and done, it was, it definitely was a, a huge deal for me. And um, yeah, I'm excited to continue to grow from there. Yeah, well, what's really cool, because a lot of people think like, oh, they see something like this, or they see someone post a check, and it's like, oh, it must have been easy to get there. But like, I remember you definitely had a bumpy road for that one. Like, it wasn't wasn't super clear cut. Like, you got it done, um, but like, just like we were talking about before, like it was a, it was a month or two. We're kind of like, oh, I don't know if this is going to go through. You know, I don't know if I can pull this off. And then you did, and that's huge. Yeah, yeah, no, bumpy. Yeah. might be an un understatement maybe <laughs> yeah it was a lot it was it was it was a lot of moving parts I, I felt like I was very eager to make it all work and mm -hmm. you know I just I just I you know kept putting one foot in front of the other that's you know I don't feel like I um, necessarily have any you know special knowledge or what anything like that mm -hmm. I think it was just like as I as I went I I figured out how to how to take that next step basically you know yeah. no it's huge i mean if you do even just one of these deals per year like that's life changing just like you're saying like it's a life changing amount of money it's cash flowing really well which is huge um i think the other thing to note here is people always like think they don't think like in milestones like okay i gotta do this thing and then this thing and this thing this thing and then you see this huge goal that some people attain but they, you don't see the little steps to get up there like with right. you like one of our first interviews, like one of, one of your flips that you did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, cause that was like a stepping stone as I see it. So like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if this was like your first deal, like probably would have been just too overwhelming, might not have gone through because there's just too much. 
Um, but you had all the previous experience from like the flips. So then you could you know, jump onto this long and larger project. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. I think that they were all stepping stones. I, you know, they, they all taught me, um, and you know, each, every deal that I've done has taught me something. Um, and, uh, and honestly, it just continued to get me to even the space where I could feel comfortable enough to even begin to try to make something like this work. Um, because it, it, you know, in reality, like I did not, I did not have the money to, to buy all these deals, you know, I mean, I mean, it was, you know, when you add up the total cost, it was, it was, you know, it was more than half a million dollars and wow. Yeah. So for the purchase price and yeah, obviously I, like I did not have all that and, um, and just to kind of trust the process and to make everything work out, um, I wouldn't have felt like I even could do it Mm -hmm. um, if I hadn't done all the previous deals um, Yeah, to to get to that, that way of thinking, you know? Yeah. That makes it, people might get the sticker shock, especially beginners. Like they see half a million, like I don't have half a million. Okay. Pass. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you didn't, you didn't do that. You're like, okay, well let's, let's make it happen. And you made it happen. Um, And that's, that's huge. That's life-changing. Yeah. Um, any other like lessons or anything like that insights with this with this deal hmm i okay so at first i wasn't like i wasn't entirely sure if it was going to be a deal Interesting. okay <laughs> like yeah. yeah and so i i guess what i would say is you know, I, I feel like we have to keep taking action, like, you know, keep taking action. That's like, you know, everyone says that I feel like any mm-hmm. successful person will always say take action, right? Um, so yes, but then also, while you're taking action, you know, um, I, I think that I just I, I, I didn't just go with the first like, thought about like, oh, this probably isn't a deal like I wanted to know. Yeah if it is. So I did my due diligence to look into it. Um, so these properties are in, uh, they're section eight properties. So, um, another thing is that I, I, I told myself for a very long time that I wouldn't get into that because I, yeah. I wouldn't, I, you know, <laughs> So I, I thought that it would be like, it's, it's way too advanced for me. That was kind of the mindset like this, you know, this is like, you know, th- there tends to be a higher amount of uh, maintenance issues and uh, it's just, I don't know, it, it just, it can be more costly and more time involved. And so rather than just kind of accepting that idea, like the opportunity came as I was doing my thing. And I just, you know, I like, I, I think it's, it just goes back to taking that one step and then taking the next step. Yeah. And like, I just did my due diligence. Like I started with, you know, finding out what they're worth. And then, you know, at first I thought, okay, I definitely don't want to own these, like any of these, I want to just, I just want to wholesale them and be done with it because this is not for me. Yeah. But then I decided, you know what, like, I'm going to call a property manager, a couple, a few property managers in town. Mm-hmm. And, um, and one of them I already knew. And, you know, I asked a bunch of questions and I was reassured after asking, like, I don't know, probably 10 times, like, are, are you sure I don't have to be involved? Like, if I, if I were to make this purchase, like, I don't like, you can fully manage this without my involvement at all. And she's like, yeah, like, that can happen. Yeah, absolutely. We can do that. We have the capacity to do that. So, so between that and finding out the numbers, I kept running the numbers and I kept thinking about like, okay, what's the worst case scenario and just analyzing, you know, like the, um, you know, like what's the worst that can happen is, okay, I'm, I, if, if I have to sell them, then I, I can sell them like from the perspective of keeping them. So after running all the numbers and seeing what the cash flow would be, I felt like I had nothing to lose to give it a shot. Like I, I felt like the risk was very, very low. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so that's why I didn't wholesale all of them. Yeah. 
Well, what I like about it is like you were numbers driven, which is what I teach a lot. Uh, Cause I know you can say like, Oh, it's section eight. So I'll pass. But like, if you look at the numbers, the numbers should tell you a story like, Hey, this is a good deal. And that's, that's basically what happened. Um, so I'm glad he didn't pass on it. A lot of people, especially when they're beginning, they're like, Oh, I don't know about that neighborhood. It's kind of, it's kind of iffy, but if let's say someone offered you a property for free, like, Hey, I'm going to give you a property for free in that neighborhood. Like, would you, would you turn it down? Probably not. I hope. <laughs> I hope nobody turns down a free property. <laughs> Especially when you're getting it at such a discount, like you're basically getting it for free. That's like just a good, you know, good analogy. So I'm glad you ran the numbers and like now you've got, you know, a huge cash flowing asset with zero of your own money into it. And uh, that's, that's pretty crazy. You know, it's pretty good. It's infinite return, you know? Yeah. 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 And it, you know, like if, you know, what I'd say is like, if I, if I could do this, you know, anyone can do this. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, taking like taking that one step then taking the next step and just keep you know i mean you gotta you have to be willing to um be open-minded and think you know continue to think bigger um that's that's part of it too but um but you know have faith that like you know when i when i was in it i just it just felt like it was it was it was like a crazy idea to be um trying to make all six buildings to close on the same date that was part of the agreement with the seller yeah. was that all six had to close on the same date and it all had to like all work out but you know i just i gave my all to make that happen and it 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 worked out so <laughs> um so like there's a sense of having faith and you know um and yeah and just keep keep growing and and picking things up along the way and you can apply it all as you go. Very cool. Um, to, to transition here, like, would you, like, would you recommend others work with me as well? Absolutely. Yes, for sure. You're the man, Victor. <laughs> Everyone should be working with you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. It's really cool to see your, like, uh, your growth over the years. Like, I remember, like, your first property, we watched, we walked in, I don't know if you're under contract to buy it or if you already bought it, the one you eventually turned into an Airbnb. So it's really cool to see yeah. your your growth, like, Hey, this, uh, it was a smaller house, like a smaller deal compared to this one. It's like, Hey, should I even do it? What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Uh, we tried to buy it off of you. Or I tried to buy it off of you. I, mean, I don't know if you remember that one. But, yes. Uh, yes. Glad you did it. Glad you did it. But I love that property. And I am so glad that I did not <laughs> yeah. sell it. <laughs> no, but it's just cool to see your, your growth. If that makes sense. Like you, you had this yes. little property, like, I don't know. And then you built confidence, build confidence. Now you're, you got this, you know, 20 door, 20 door. And like, if you had to do another 20 door, you'd be like, oh, whatever, let's, you know, let's just knock it out. So you're just building, <laughs> which is huge. Um, well, this has been fantastic, Jared. Again, I appreciate it. Like, it's really cool to see, really cool to see your journey and see how you're progressing. You got this major deal here. Um, yeah, so really cool stuff. Any like final thoughts as we wrap up here? Anything else on your mind? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm trying to think what, um, I mean, I, I, pretty much shared you know anything i learned along the way yeah um yeah I, I i have to okay so my final thought is it's it's my it's a big challenge that i have but i'm always it's always on the forefront of my mind and i like every time i talk to you and um and and many other people i always like to bring it up because it's so important and it's just having that mentality trying to have that mentality of of focus yeah um focusing on as as minimal things as possible like ideally one thing you know it, it so you can be an expert at it and um and and just being clear on that so that you don't spend your time and your energies chasing all this you know shiny objects chasing all the you know all, like all, all the things like everything seems like a good opportunity mm -hmm. um but in reality th yeah they they all might be good opportunities but if you if you try to do all of them, you're not going to get anywhere um, because you're competing with everyone else. Yeah. And when you focus and you really spend your, your time and your energy and resources on, on as little of those things as possible, you can really laser beam forward because you're, you're able to do things. You're able to be creative and apply, you know, certain resources and strategy in ways to potentially be, you know, uh, better than, the competition and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I'd say that that's always, and I, I struggle with it. That's what I started to say is because I don't know if it's because 
I was diagnosed with ADHD and I'm just all over the place. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I'm not using that as an excuse, but it just, I get really tempted by like new, exciting ideas and things, but it, you like, I just feel like it's so important to say no and be, you know, be clear on what your, your focus is like, no, know that ahead of time. So that way you can continue to grow on that. So. I think that's a good way to look at it. Just the focus thing um, is really key. And yeah, um, yeah no, it's, it's really key because it is so easy. That's the other thing. Like once you start to see more and more success, you're going to get more shiny objects. That's why you got to focus more because uh, now you have more money to do other things. So you can, you know, you can open up a restaurant, you can open up a, a gym, you can open up, you know, like a laundromat. Like you have all these different options, but the, the focus, especially as you get bigger and bigger, is, is so key. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, for scaling and all of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, again, I appreciate you taking the time here and uh, we can just wrap it up there. But yeah, very, you know, awesome to hear your journey. And uh, yeah, just keep at whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. (laughs) All right. I'll I'll do my best. (laughs) Thanks, Victor.